Hello and welcome to the next video of the second video of the introduction to MCMP. First, we'll talk about some basics about modeling and simulation. Like modeling, like model, model verification and validation, sometimes called V and V. Model verification. It's about making sure that you're making the right model to describe your physical problem, such as we had a field road originally, something like that. Some field pits compressed over each other with a very small distance in between. Someone could make its model like a colon, just of missile material. This will be less accurate than someone who took into his consideration the Helium gap and the cloud and the beginning of active length and leaving the plenum up there. Like that. Side gap. Uh, the results of this model will be more accurate than that of this model. That's what we call a model verification. What about model validation? Validation is making sure that your model is doing the right things. That's why in our nuclear engineering we use something called the benchmark experiment. Benchmark experiment means that I build a model up to every exclusive detail each detail, even, let's say, if I'm describing a fuel rod in a grid, the tolerance between this grid and this fuel rod, because it will differ in the moderated fuel ratio if I'm talking about criticality and fission. And compare this model result, the refined model, First, I'll have to verify it with the experiment results. As soon as I find that my results are comparable to the experiment results with a minimum error, Therefore, I can proceed in my experiment or in my modeling problem and enhance it and may I uh, something like uh, contribute to my problem. That's all about model verification and validation. It's very important in the modeling industry. Then, regarding MCMP, I have to describe the difference between Accuracy and precision. Accuracy and precision differ from each other. They, those two terms appear only and both appears in probabilistic methods of computations. First I have to define the difference between each one of them. Accuracy is accuracy is how uh, close you are from what you aim. Precision is uh, all of your scenarios or histories are close to each other. 
course, we recall scenarios and histories were defined in the previous video. Okay, then let's have an example like a dart. We aim for this spot. We have thrown like five darts. One was there, and one was there, one was there, one was there, and one was there. This is called accurate and precise. How about this case? One was there, one was there, one was there, one was there, and one was there. This is called accurate and not precise. How about this one? One was there, one was there, one was there, one was there. This one is precise, but not accurate. That's about the accuracy and precision. Now let's talk about something related to MCMP, which is tallying. What is tallying? Tallying is a counting technique. Remember when we were kids, when we used to count something, we used 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then we used to count each one of these. How many fives do I have? In order to find the total number that I've, that I've counted. Telling in MCMP is the same principle. Let's say we have a 10,000 histories. It doesn't calculate the histories as a 10,000 as a bulk. No, count it as a thousand and find its mean, standard deviation, your merit. We will talk about each one of these. Then 2000, the combined mean of both, combined standard deviation, combined figure of merit, and combined VOV. 3000, combined of mean 1 and mean 2, and so on. It reaches our 10,000 to find my last mean, standard deviation. Permit and VOV. Let's see what we have here. What's the definition of mean? Mean is the center of mass of my data set. Let's say I have data set something like that. Then my mean will be something like that. This is the mean of the first thousand with Standard deviation sigma. The mean of the next thousand may be something like that. With its standard deviation. And so on till, till we reach our ten thousand. Why do we use something like that? Why would, why would we use the tallying principle? We use tallying principle in order to use some sort of statistical checks. Statistical checks to make sure that your results are reliable. In order not to make uh, less number of histories, so you are biased. So your results are biased. Therefore, we have the mean of your results of should have certain behavior, which is random, which means the first thousand may be up, second thousand may be down, third thousand may be up, fourth thousand may be up. 50,000 maybe down and so on. 
So our mean must be random behavior. What else do we have? Our relative error. Since we are depending on our histories, then we have standard deviation or relative error. This relative error has three chips. One of them, as long as our histories increase, our standard deviation statistically must decrease. So, relative error has to be monotonically decreasing. Also, it has to vary with 1 over square root number of histories. And at last, it has to be less than 0.1. Those are the statistical checks of the relative error. Then we have variance of variance. Variance of variance, which, is, which is, its abbreviation is BOV, is the most one related to the Terry principle. Since I have 1000 and its standard deviation, the second, the second thousand, which is, has its standard deviation, the thousand of its standard deviation, and so on. Then let's find the standard deviation of these standard deviations. It should be monotonically decreasing as the number of histories increase, it should be monotonically decreasing. In order to make sure that each mean we draw of them like that, this mean is here, this mean is here. Uh -huh. We said that our mean is random behavior of the four. This is our final mean and this is our variance of values. And it should be less than 0.1 also. And it will vary with 1 over number of histories. At last, we have to find the last check, which is figure of merit. Figure of merit represents the stability of the system. So we guess it should behave randomly. And also, in the second half of the cycle, let's say from 5,000 history to 10,000 history, it should be constant in order to represent the stability of our system. Thank you very much.